Okay. So hi, everybody. Uh, this is Aaron Murakami with uh, Energetic Forum, and today is May 28th, and uh, we're getting actually close to midnight, so this is a late-night call. And uh, tonight on the phone, I have with me uh, John Polakowski, who is uh, pretty much the first person ever to replicate Eric Dollard's Cosmic Induction Generator Project. Um, can you hear me okay, John? Yeah, I can hear you great, Aaron. Okay. So uh, John is out in uh, San Luis Obispo, California, and if uh, many of, if uh, any of you have been following this for a while, um, you know, back quite a, quite a while back, uh, Eric Dollard had um, you know replicated you know uh, you, even to this day quite a few different Tesla technologies, and one of them, uh, or root, at least rooted in Tesla technologies, because Eric has actually made improvements on some of the Tesla uh, transmission systems. And one of his more interesting technologies is called the cosmic induction generator which actually materializes and lets you visually see the intrinsic formative forces of the universe right inside of a uh, plasma bulb, which is uh, being excited by uh, some, uh, I guess you would say, what, opposing dielectric fields? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really strong dielectric fields. And, uh, and, and there's some pictures online of some of these uh, purple plasma discharges, which are quite a bit different from just these, you know, typical plasma bulbs and stuff that you can buy out of any novelty store. I mean, these are actually, you know, very, um, almost look like little galaxies and spirals and stuff. There's little, uh, uh, the fractals and stuff, and they all conform to the golden ratio. And they're obviously very visually different from a lot of the plasma, you know, bulbs that are out there for like entertainment purposes and um, but uh, being that it's 2014 right now uh, within the last few years John Polakowski has been one of the uh, uh, primary uh, builders in Energetic Forum um, replicating a lot of Eric's work and do you want to tell a little bit of the story about how you learned about Eric and how it came to be that you and uh, maybe a couple others helped to publish some of his papers in the forum when he didn't have internet access and, and your story about him living with you and kind of what, what got you kind of involved with uh, working with his, uh, his uh, technology and learning his science? Yeah, so um, a number of years ago, um, I had met Eric through the N6KPH Yahoo group. And um, a, a message went out on the group that Eric needed a place to stay, that he was homeless, and uh, he needed to find a, a place to spend the winter. And I had an extra, an extra room in my house at the time. Actually, I had a couple extra rooms. And so I, uh, I wrote back saying that, you know, he was welcome to, to stay at my house, you know, for as long as he wanted to. And um, I ended up getting uh, a message back, and then we, me and him, ended up talking over the phone a couple times. And then uh, a month later, he came to he came to live with me in Morro Bay, and and which was great. And um, I helped him publish some some things on the forum, and uh, he he lived with me off and on for about a, a year and a half, and. Uh, during the whole time, you know, he was teaching me things. I was typing things out, you know, to, to post on the forum. And we were, we were getting equipment together and uh, making trips to salvage yards. And he was just kind of teaching me basically how he's operated um, his life so far as far as uh, building equipment. He kind of he kind of mm -hmm. showed me the ropes of how he's been doing things and, and you know, basically tutored me uh, in, in electrical engineering. So, so what's um, like, like some of your background? Because obviously, you're not just saying that he can walk off the street, street, come face to face with Eric, and then start, you know, understanding what he's talking about. Like, uh, do you have a background in electrical engineering? Or yeah. You go so to I went to uh, I went to I went to uh, college for computer engineering, which is um, basically half electrical engineering, half uh, computer science. Okay. Um, but I, I ended up liking the electrical engineering. Uh, portion of it way more, and that's why I took most of my coursework. Um, and then, uh, so I, I had that, I had that, uh, you know, conventional background um, in in electrical engineering. And then, um, when so when I was able to meet with Eric, he wasn't just you know teaching somebody who had no no uh, background at all or no schooling. So I was able to pick things up with him pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. 
So is, now were you going to school down in California, kind of near near where you were living, or yeah, yeah, at Cal Poly. Or? Okay. I I had gone to school at Cal Poly, which is in San Luis Obispo. Mm-hmm. Um, so so and, so you're at least like mechanically inclined and stuff, and kind of had like an engineering kind of mind with logic and that kind of stuff. So you're able to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've always uh, always been very mechanically inclined, and and really enjoyed you know building things with my hands and, mm-hmm. and solving problems and putting stuff together. And so right. it was uh, it was a great fit. So, like, you know, over the last few years, and this is before we ever had a chance to meet each other in person, and even before I met um, Eric personally, you know, before the last conference, was that, um, you know, for the last, I don't know, two years, two and a half, almost three years or whatever, that when you're talking about publishing, you know, some of Eric's papers and stuff, basically he would write up some papers, and since he's not really an Internet guy or, you know, I mean, he doesn't even have a cell phone or anything, and he actually prefers it that way. <laughs> That, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so so he would write something up, and basically you or somebody else would basically just transcribe this online for him under his right, yep. uh, username. Would, on uh, one and yeah, he would handwrite it out, um, and then I would I would type it in for him, and then um, a lot of times he would want you know pictures or diagrams to go along with it, so right. we'd go you know look and, and find some pictures that would go with the, go along with what he had written. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we were able to put out some some really informative posts for people um, mm-hmm. on the on the internet forum. And, and my username at that time um, was Jay Paul Cow. Well, it still is, but um, everything went uh, out under his username T Rex. Right. And so that's pretty much uh, for the last three years or so. All probably almost the only place on the internet that Eric's recent material over the last few years has ever really been, you know, posted on his behalf. Yep, yep, exactly. That's where that's where all his new stuff is coming out. And so before then, it's probably been years because um before then was the last stuff um of Eric's work pretty much published back in the Borderland days or yeah. has it been that that big of a gap since uh a lot of his work yeah, it, yeah it's been that long. Public. And that's been quite a quite a long time. So yeah. you know, so so after getting to to know Eric and you know he's living with you and obviously you know there's a whole encyclopedia you know beyond an encyclopedia full of uh, things that you could be working on you know with Eric with the uh, you know electrical sciences and the test of technology and and that kind of thing. So what what what's what kind of drew you to the cosmic conduction generator and how did that whole concept kind of kind of come up and what drew you to it? To, to actually start working on it. Right. Well, um, that was a, a piece of equipment that um, produced some amazing results that um, were very counter to conventional conventional science or conventional uh, physics or electrical engineering. And I kind of saw that as something that needed to be um, brought back, brought back from the dead, um, you know, while he's still around, so it it, it doesn't disappear. Um, right. There's a lot of people uh, working on different things, um, you know, on the forum or or wherever, you know, uh, free energy or what Eric calls energy synthesis, um, among other things. But I felt this was an area that nobody else was really spending uh, any time or energy on, and uh, mm-hmm. it ne- it needed to be done, um, and, and nobody else was going to do it. So that's uh, that's why I felt like uh, it was it was something I I needed to accomplish. So now with the cosmic induction generator, um, you know, for anybody listening that may not really know, you know, the details of what what it even is or what purpose it serves or whatever, can you give like a maybe a little bit of background of of uh, you know kind of Eric's process of where he kind of started with that type of technology and what he experienced yeah. and. And how he kind of scaled it up, and you know, to my understanding, maybe like a 2,000 watt version, you know, at the RCA building was maybe like the last time he was he had done anything with it, and then uh, kind of where where you're stepping into it, and, and where you want to take it. Right. So um, the the physical configuration of it is that it consists of two um, two sets of Tesla coils that uh, directly oppose each other, so they're pointed at each other. Uh, and then they're they're driven um, 
by a NAND transmitter, and uh, they're driven such that uh, they're 180 degrees out of phase electrically. So there's this really strong um, changing dielectric field uh, in, in the middle between the two coils, and then all kinds of cool stuff happens there, uh, stuff that you wouldn't expect. Um, and where it gets its name from, the cosmic induction generator, what happens if you take a, a bulb that is conducive to uh, creating plasma inside is uh, various um, plasma shapes will start appearing in the bulb that uh, aren't normal, that aren't what you'd normally expect. And one of the things that can happen is it can take on the, the actual... Um, shape of a galaxy or, or the cosmos. And that's where the cosmic aspect comes from. The induction aspect is that mm -hmm. you're creating really, really uh, a strong dielectric fields or dielectric induction, like Eric likes to call it, uh, in between the two coils. And that's, that's where the, the word induction comes from. And then it's, it generates that, generates the, the cosmic induction. Uh, in between the two, the two tests as well. Now, now there was a book called Cosmic Superimposition, and what, was that by Wilhelm Reich? Yeah, yeah, Wilhelm Reich. And t talking about like the, the formative forces of the universe almost, it kind of resembles like the concepts of the, um, like the uh, morphic or morphogenic fields that like uh, Rupert Sheldrake talks about where like, you know, in the ethers, there's um, like these different uh, patterns and stuff like that, which are obviously invisible to us, but they kind of dictate how a lot of a lot of the physical stuff kind of ha happens uh, in the physical world. Yeah, that's one of the really interesting aspects of this is that when you get these these golden ratio discharges, um, it's obviously not the the shortest path for the for the um, arc discharges to take. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes you wonder if that's what the the underlying um, structure of our universe is, is these um, geometrical golden ratio um, architecture or geometry that, that makes up our universe. It, it definitely indicates that, and um, definitely more research needs to be done in this area. Right. Because, I mean, even, you know, the, the, the dimensions of, you know, a human being, you know, there are... are the, the span from, you know, fingertip to fingertip, if you're holding your arms out to, you know, the, the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, all these different ratios, and, and right. it's reflected in, you know, how a tree grows and, you know, all these spiral patterns, like in a nautilus shell and these spirals and, and uh, you know, flower of life patterns that show up mm -hmm. and, that, you know, the pine cone patterns. And so there's so, something very interesting that, so, you know, so, something is kind of influencing, like, these... Uh, uh, you know, how, how these patterns kind of take shape and how, you know, cells kind of come together and form different things. And right. And I mean, it's just, yeah. obviously a, a, a pattern or a code that life follows, but what's really, you know, intriguing is, you know, for a, a plasma to, to discharge in that shape, you know, just in, just in the air without any other, right. you know, um, structure there, it kind of points to the fact that that's what the underlying structure of, of just reality is right now, now with the um, cosmic induction generator you know besides just demonstrating inside of plasma bulbs these um, you know re really you know beautiful and profound geometric patterns um, what uh, the, the, the coils when you talk about these uh, you know opposing coils where one is round in one way one is round in the opposite way and then you're creating these like opposing dielectric or you know I would say like electrostatic fields, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, right right in the space in between. Um, the the coils themselves and the designs for them and the formulas to basically calculate how many windings and all that. Eric had put that in the forum or maybe you typed it up for him and the, and that was known as the uh, like the Crystal Radio Initiative or yeah the Crystal Radio the, Initiative. Yeah, and that's so the Crystal Radio Initiative is basically a set of papers that Eric put forward, which kind of showed like you know anybody listening if if they don't know what a Crystal Radio is, it's basically a uh, 
a little circuit that doesn't even have a battery, yet it allows you to receive like a AM transmission from an AM uh, uh, radio station, and you can plug an earpiece in, and you can actually hear it. And it's actually powered mm-hmm. from the radio waves themselves, right? Right. Yeah. yeah what what their uh, original goal for that was was to uh, create the passive coils, and then um, actually ground them and receive uh, the longitudinal component from a from a regular radio station, and actually try to receive some power uh, through the Tesla coils from from an AM station. So without actually be showing that the transmission is actually going through the ground and not the air, as most people think. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, and, and there were some comments that you know, off of, I guess, an upscaled crystal radio based on these principles and Eric's designs and stuff that. Uh, it may be possible to even power like a 100 watt light bulb right out of this uh, AM transmission. Yeah, that was that would be a, a pinnacle achievement. If you could do that, then then you've right. done well. And and it looks like some people kind of uh, experimented with the concept on a smaller scale and actually did get some light bulbs to light up. But with the um, antenna designs. So that's where you basically got the formulas and everything to basically calculate the windings and the diameter of the antennas and all that, or coils yep. for the cosmic induction generator. So it's really, if somebody builds a set of those coils based on what's shared in the, in the Crystal Radio Initiative at Energetic Forum in Eric's writings, um, it's not just for that. It, it's really kind of a universal um, coil system that, can, that has many, many applications so besides that crystal radio concept or you know, even the cosmic induction generator, um, could those coils even be used for like, you know, uh, like communication from one point to another and, and other things besides just these plasma discharges inside of bulbs? Oh, yeah, um, any of those things. Basically, uh, it's a formula for creating um, any, t- any Tesla coil system. Granted, there's, there's a little bit, a little... Um, more know-how that has to go into actually building the coils too, but um, uh-huh. but yeah, that's 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 the formula right there for um, for for building um, coils that can do the the cause of induction generator or uh-huh. transmitting and receiving to the ground, um, right? As well as some other things too. Uh, one of the things that we're gonna try to look look at with. Uh, with the coil that we built here is um, taking a look at um, the effects that we, we've gotten with these coils based on the, the formula um, and see how the, the calculated frequency matches up with the, the actual resonant frequency of the coils and um, see how closely things match the, the formula so we can improve on it uh, even more and kind mm-hmm. of... Um, narrow down the experimental aspects of of the, the Tesla coil. It, it, it doesn't seem like many people have really looked into um, optimizing mm-hmm. the, the parameters of the, of the coils themselves. Now, now one, you know, really profound um, concept that came out of some of your experiments that uh, you and Eric had plotted out on some charts by taking the data of um, looking at the kind of emissions from the coils compared to uh, how much power is being drawn, uh, you know, inside the radio tra- the, the radio frequency transmit. It's basically an old Navy transmitter. Is that yeah. you, you know the, the the popular belief is that you know energy cannot be created or destroyed, and you know there's a lot of semantics in the so-called free energy field and this and that about free energy or or you know what's really happening. But the bottom line is is that what the data is showing is that there's X amount of watts of RF power being pumped into these things, and what you're measuring with these, you know, the field meter in between the coils and everything is is that basically the energy looks like it's basically uh, disappearing into thin air. Yeah, it certainly appeared that way. Um, granted, we, we didn't do, a, you know, extremely rigorous uh, data collection, but... It, it certainly appeared that way that um, we were we were putting more power in, into the coils and uh, into the tank circuit 
um, right. but we're getting less uh, less field strength mm-hmm. um, as as a result. And so that energy was going somewhere, um, but it wasn't in the field, mm-hmm. you know, around the coil that we could tell. Um, right. And uh, it wasn't in the tank circuit, but it was it was coming out of the transmitter. So um, mm-hmm. it's a mystery uh, where it ended up. But uh, hopefully we can we can do a little more rigorous data collection and kind of right. see what's going on there. So so it's almost like it's disappearing, like in the counter space, if we're using you know some of that terminology. Where um, what well, well, what I found interesting is that it looks like as the voltage is going up. The current is actually like bottoming out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah. That's that's uh, what what Eric's thinking at least is that it's uh, it's going into counter space and uh, right. That's that's also uh, apparently um, when you start seeing some of the, the living forms um, uh-huh. start start to appear in the in the bulb if if you had a a plasma bulb placed in between the coils at the time. That's when you start to see some of the the living forms uh, of plasma um, show up in the bulb. And it's remarkable what what some of the people who said, who who witnessed the original caustic induction generator, they Uh they said that the the plasma forms actually appeared to be intelligent and have a memory. And they they wouldn't go to the same place twice. Uh They would kind of dance around each other. in kind of a, a playful way, and uh, they actually, you know, look to actually be alive. Right. We'll see what the, uh, you know, voltage going up and current going down, like in, um, you know, even in some uh, conventional electrical engineering is known a- as, you know, some negative negative resistance characteristics. Like, for example, there's a few transistors, you know, like a MJL21194 or like a, a little uh, 2N 2222 where you can like just hit these sweet spots where as you start increasing the voltage, the current actually drops down for a little bit of range. And then you start getting right. out of the sweet spot and the current starts coming back up showing that, you know, instead of the current kind of coming up as well, it actually drops down showing, you know, showing these negative resistance characteristics. But the input power supply and that radio transmitter, you're talking about like the voltage applied to a certain part of the tube, which is actually helping to crank that power out, is actually staying the same. Yeah, the the voltage, uh, well, the voltage that we applied to the tube was was the same throughout. But what would change is the the plate current that um, uh-huh. uh, came came out of the transmitter, and we noticed that um, the plate the plate current was was increasing. Um, uh uh-huh. And the the energy was being uh, transferred to the secondary of uh-huh. the, the Tesla coil, but it wasn't showing up in the in the field strength. Right. So it was kind of uh, kind of a mystery. Right. Now, now within the last maybe I don't know month and a half ago or two months or something like that, um, like you and Eric were uh, plotting all that data out, and actually, in, I think you made a spreadsheet out of it, or at least a uh, some graphs in a spreadsheet, and so those are all posted in energetic forum. And I think you may have reposted those in your own blog, which is John Polakowski Science dot com. Yep, yep, I posted them there as well. So, so yeah, anybody listening, if you actually kind of uh, want to see these, you can go to John Polakowski Science dot com, and this is a new website that John is just getting going, and it kind of uh, kind of highlights the cosmic induction generator project. And uh, on that website, not only does it talk about that, but if, um, uh, one thing that we haven't even mentioned yet is that there currently is an Indiegogo campaign, which is a crowdfunding campaign for John. And um, you know, there's only as of right now, there's only maybe uh, three days left or so. And the goal was to raise maybe thirteen thousand um, dollars earlier today. It was at about maybe four thousand dollars, and uh, I'd sent out a mailing, and uh, somebody was kind enough to actually donate three thousand dollars, just you know, one person. And, um, you know, do you want to kind of maybe give a shout out to anybody who's kind of donated, no matter how big or small, and maybe kind yeah, of explain, I mean, I, explain what, I what the money is going to be going to? You know, every, everyone who's donated so far, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to take, you know, 
hard-earned money and, and donate to somebody you don't even know. And so I'm incredibly grateful for everyone who's donated so far, how, you know, however big or small. Um, it, it's, it's amazing. I, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> um, but for all of you that have donated, rest be assured it's, it's going to a good cause and uh, this will be completed uh, no matter what. Um, I've been working on it for for uh, almost two years now, um, just funding it myself. Um, basically, every every dollar I earned and every spare minute I I had, I, I spent on this project um, to get it this far. And so, all the donations are, are really going to help me uh, complete the project. Um, as far as um, what the the donations are going to be used for. Um, one of the things that's going to help me uh, get to the conference, the, the Energy Science Conference uh, at the end of June, and uh, bring the cosmic induction generator that I have done so far to the conference and, and do some demonstrations so people can see it for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, also, it's going to um, help me uh, repair my vehicle to make trips out to the lab to, to meet with Eric and, and build equipment and make progress there. Um, and also, um, you know, some of the other things it's going to be used for is, is more uh, parts and materials to, to finish this the, the high-power version of it up. Um, right now we kind of have a, a low-power, you know, probably around 100-watt version. And I, I've been in the process of, of building a... Uh, one or two kilowatt version, um, but I don't have all the parts for it yet. Uh -huh. And so uh, these donations will really, really help purchase some of those parts, as well as um, you know some more precise test equipment to kind of measure you know the more precise uh, field strength and right. and some other uh, parameters that will will help optimize optimize. Uh, the system and, and really help us see what's going on. Right now, and just so that everybody is clear, um, you know the the replicate you know replication of, of uh, Eric's uh, cosmic induction generator is not a not a uh, an if or a maybe or an R and D kind of thing. I mean, at this point um, and and for months now, you actually do have a fully working cosmic induction generator that you did replicate. It's, it's just at the small scale, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. power levels. Because, I, you know, I, I took a few trips down to Eric's lab, you know, a, a long, grueling 2,000-mile round trip. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I saw you and took some video and photos um, when you were first, uh, you know, sawing some wood behind the shop, you know, just put the coils together and, and seeing that come into fruition. And then uh, uh, you and Eric, you know, <laughs> Uh, trying to get this uh, Navy transmitter that, you know, working all the bugs out of it, finally get it working and, and oh my gosh, yeah. you know, just seeing, you, you know, both you guys kind of work together at the bench and, uh, you know, Eric working his magic on the, the tuning stuff and pretty soon it's, uh, it's working and, uh, you know, you have the uh, uh, fluorescent tube and he's, you know, putting on different spots to kind of test it and stuff and, and, uh, uh, so it's kind of amazing and, you know, just kind of an honor to, to see all this come together because this is kind of a rare, you know, I consider a rare historical moment for something like this to even be, you know, coming back together. And, uh, you know, so, somebody like you to kind of resurrect this uh, lost and forgotten kind of technology that, you know, people know the name of it. They've seen, you know, seen some pictures and, and stuff like that. But, you know, Eric's primary focus right now is the uh, advanced uh, seismic warning system, which, you know, he's working with Justin down, down in uh, the desert, you know, um, repairing uh, the poles and stuff like that. And I know that Eric is, uh, you know, very grateful that you're kind of carrying on the cosmic induction generator project because he doesn't really have time to focus on that. And, and you're the first one ever to do so. And, um, so like at the conference, uh, you know, the, this conference that John is mentioning is the 2014 Energy, and Sci Energy Science and Technology Conference, and the details on that are at energysciencesconference.com. And uh, John's going to be bringing um, what he has so far, which will be a, a demonstration of the cosmic induction generator, 
and um, his goal is to basically you know uh, upscale it quite a bit uh, beyond anything that's been done before because I think what the the largest power supply Eric was using was about a 2,000 watt unit, and this is back at the RCA Marconi building days, you know, 20 years ago or something like that. Yeah, I think that's right. And so right now you're at about a hundred watt level, and you're you want to move up to at least about a one thousand watt level. Yeah, it's not somewhere between one one and two thousand watts. Um, one and two thousand watts. The transmitter okay. I'm building is kind of um, uh, it can be changed uh, pretty easily. Uh, mm-hmm. Bigger tubes put in, so um, it should be able to, to to put it up to about two thousand watts, no problem. So what power what power range as far as watts um, can those exact same uh, 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 coils handle? Uh, oh geez, that's hard to say. I would say probably up to about five thousand watts. About five thousand um, watts. Okay. Yeah. Now, now if, uh, everybody hasn't seen this or not. If you go to John Polakowski Science dot com. Um, or if you go into Indiegogo.com and if you search for a cosmic induction generator, um, there is uh, some pictures of some large AM radio transmitters out of an old, uh, two actually two different radio uh, AM radio transmitter sites, radio stations. Uh, they're they're about the size of maybe you know each one's about the size of what like two phone booths, and each one of those transmitters are about five what five thousand watts, right? Yeah, so each one they're, five thousand. And, and, and so there's two of those, and part of the money um, raised in the Indiegogo campaign, one of them is already fully paid for, and the other one, um, uh, they still need to, to purchase that. And so once you get your system up to, you know, one to 2,000 watt level, um, then the next step is to, to replicate the whole cosmic induction generator technology up to, what, that would be 10,000 watts, which is going to be crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah, it hasn't been done before. And so, you know, not only does it show these things, but you, with the uh, flames, like the coils, you can actually pump audio into these using this technology, and it's like one of the most hi-fi uh, audio technologies that you could ever have. Do you want to explain a little bit about that? Right. So uh, if you have a if you have a um, plasma, you know, a solid plasma uh, stream between the two between the two uh, coils, mm-hmm. you can modulate the signal that's, going, that's driving the coils with, a, with an audio source, and um, then you'll, the, the, the arc will actually play music by, right. by getting larger and, and smaller. That's right. you know, how, by displacing the air. Um, and the really cool thing with having the two, the two big AM transmitters because then you can you can have a stereo system, as in you have two two sources of sound, as in you know two speakers. So you know you would have uh, two two separate arcs going on to hear to hear music in stereo instead of mm-hmm. instead of just from one one plasma speaker, which which would be amazing. It would be, it'd be right. absolutely amazing to uh, hear that quality of music. Right now, now some people have you know talked about well, there's you know these Tesla coils making music and stuff like that. You can see them on YouTube, but it's not even the same ball game because a lot of those are just limited to a few frequencies, right? Because I mean, I've I've heard some of the sounds played on some of those high voltage Tesla coils, and the audio is limited to where it almost you know the the audio quality is limited to like what you would hear like on a Donkey Kong or a uh, yeah, <laughs> Mar- yeah Mario Brothers you know Mario Brothers video game or something like that right yeah yeah very poor very poor uh, right sound quality and distortion and that sort of thing and and with the cosmic induction generator concept it's basically going to be so high fidelity it's almost like you know practically distortion free perfect audio and just you know like 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 living sound that you're just going to be completely encompassed with you know just <laughs> So it's completely yeah, it different. Be, it should be amazing. It should be completely amazing. right. So, um, so you know, if you're listening to this, and if you want to help, uh, you, you know, and, and we really hope that you consider helping John out. You know, no matter how little or how big your contribution can be, you know, whether it's you know, uh, you know, a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars, even if you can just donate five bucks, you know, that's still going to help push this project forward. And even if you're not able to uh, contribute anything. 
just getting the word out about it and just um, share johnpolakowskiscience.com. And, John, I'll put this, the subtitles to your website, uh, the address down at the bottom of the video when I put this on YouTube. And, um, and if you go to cosmic or uh, johnpolakowskiscience.com, um, even after the Indiegogo campaign here in a couple days, you can still support them because there's going to be a, a name and address if you want to send a check or money order to it. Or if you just want to donate directly by PayPal, that's going to be on the website. And it's actually there right now. And so um, I know it's getting close to uh, midnight right now, John, and I appreciate your time. I know it's late. Uh, you got some things to do. i got to get to bed here pretty soon. And, yeah, um, John. and other than that, uh, you know, if you want to come up and uh, check out a live demonstration of the Cosmic Induction Generator, what John has going on, definitely go to uh, energiscienceconference.com. Uh, register to that. It's going to be up in uh, Idaho, um, right across the Idaho border from uh, Spokane, uh, Spokane, Washington. Uh, it's going to be an amazing conference. Uh, John's going to be demonstrating that. Eric's going to be giving a talk on the uh, Tesla Alexanderson extraluminal uh, transmission systems, and uh, he may even be doing some demos with those exact same coils, just teaching some different principles and stuff. And so it's definitely going to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to uh, see all these guys doing these uh, amazing demonstrations and giving these presentations on uh, you know these technologies that you're really not going to be able to learn about anywhere else. And so anyway, um, John, thank you very much. Um, I well, look forward you, to you know seeing you seeing you here in about four weeks up in the uh, Northwest here. And yep. so yep. Um, you know, good, good luck with the project, and we'll see you soon. And thank you everybody okay. for listening. Thank you guys. Okay. Take care, John. Take care. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Bye-bye.